Good morning, Chairwoman Velasquez, Ranking Member Shabbat, and distinguished members of the committee. On behalf of CTIA and its hundred, hundreds of carriers and manufacturer members, I want to thank the committee for focusing its attention on the upcoming 700 megahertz auction. This spectrum and the recently auctioned AWS spectrum will continue to facilitate the wireless industry's provision of broadband to the person. Over 150 wireless companies provide service to more than 243 million Americans today. These companies have an excess of $25 billion in capital expenditures each year and account for over 253,000 jobs in America. Last year, there were 1.8 trillion minutes of use in the United States. There currently are 18.7 billion SMS text messages issued per month. From a public safety perspective, there are 291,000 wireless calls to E911 each day. More than 15 companies manufacture handsets for use in the United States market. There are hundreds and hundreds of handsets available to American consumers. And perhaps even more staggering, there are over a thousand companies that display their products and services at CTIA's annual shows each year. All of these products and services are provided to the American consumer for one-fourth of the average price per minute that consumers in Europe uh, experience. In addition, U.S. subscribers use 834 minutes per month. That's 500 minutes more than the next closest country in Europe. In addition, U.S. subscribers enjoy benefits in, involving uh, less costs, more minutes, more offerings, more carrier choices than anyone on the planet. Other countries envy that, this market, the market that is developed in the United States, and the country, its regulators and legislators should be proud. The 700 megahertz spectrum referred by some as beachfront property could help to continue that trend. Unfortunately, when the Commission sought comment on the potential service rules for the spectrum, a small subset of new entrants promoted proposals designed to tailor the auction to their own unique business models and promoted proposals that were designed to prevent access by some incumbents. Much of the debate during this process has centered on proposals put forth by a group of well-funded companies with a combined market capitalization of one-half trillion dollars. Companies will spend the next few months reviewing the rules and making decisions whether to participate in the auction. But it is arguable that these new conditions, which contradict the FCC's past policies of supporting license flexibility, could have a negative effect on the ability of small businesses to take part in and ultimately win licenses in 700 megahertz. Specifically, the Commission's open platform and geographic build-out requirements could place 700 megahertz licenses out of the reach of small businesses. As referenced in the letters that we attached to my written testimony, a coalition of 139 companies, all of which would qualify as small businesses, oppose the open access requirement. Additionally, 55 companies and organizations, again, the majority of which would qualify as small businesses, oppose the geographic build-out requirement. In setting the band plan and service rules for the 700 megahertz spectrum, the Commission adopted a mix of spectrum and license sizes, as well as regulatory requirements. For example, in the upper C block, a 22 megahertz block of spectrum, the Commission has imposed an open platform condition. CTI and many large and small incumbent wireless carriers argued that removing carriers' ability to control the handsets permitted, permitted on its network limits the ability of the carrier to manage the security, the quality, and the viability of its wireless networks. Further, with the fast pace of innovation in this industry, having the government try to predict or direct where the industry should go is a troubling concept. Similarly, the upper D block is subject to a public-private partnership obligation. The additional obligations this condition places on the D block licensee will likely make it less attractive to small businesses. In the lower band licenses, the Commission adopted a geographic build-out requirement that potentially limits the desire of small businesses to purchase that spectrum. Requiring carriers to serve those areas where there are few, if any, people may require small business licenses to build sites that they cannot afford to maintain. Specifically, licenses will need to reach 35% of the geographic area in four years and 70% by the end of the license term. To put this into perspective, according to the U.S. Census, 87% of our population lives in 8% of the geography. Taken collectively, the Commission's decisions to encumber the 700 megahertz license with new service obligations could significantly impact small business opportunities. On the spectrum front, this committee also could help licensees that won spectrum in the recent AWS auction. Some of the 104 winners, many of whom were small businesses, may have to wait as long as four years to begin operation. Companies purchased licenses in the AWS auction and have been unable to begin serving customers as government incumbents have yet to clear the spectrum, and the process of coordinating operation prior to relocation has proven difficult. We urge this committee to help small businesses with AWS license, licenses by working with those agencies to ensure the timely re relocation or prior to re relocation, the coordination of the use of that spectrum. 
In addition to asking and investigating issues regarding small business access to spectrum, this committee also could aid small businesses by helping to ensure that unnecessary, unfunded mandates are not placed on wireless carriers. This was referenced in Mr. Bond's testimony. In the last 18 months alone, carriers large and small have faced the prospect of having to upgrade their networks to face new Calia, E911, CPNI, Emergency Alert, Katrina, and other unfunded mandates. Perhaps even more than access to spectrum, these additional burdens on the provision of wireless service threaten to significantly Im impact the viability of small carriers. Finally, I commend the committee for its recent hearing on the need to extend the internet tax moratorium. CTI urges the committee to continue to press for lower, simplified taxation, not only for internet service, but also for wireless service. It too is a critical input for many small businesses. Thank you, Madam Chair, and I look forward to your questions.